Let's do our makeup. Let's get ready for work. And most importantly, let's talk about Jesus. Okay, let's talk about Jesus. Here we go. Okay, so we're starting with a clean face. The first step is actually concealer. So I want to talk about the Book of Numbers and specifically the manna mentioned in the Book of Numbers. So I'm gonna start with a little background. That way we know what's going on. We know what we're walking into. The Israelites have been freed from Egypt. The whole Mount Sinai, Ten Commandments thing has happened with Moses. Moses has come down from the mountain to find all the Israelites walled now to a golden calf. He's like, what? And y'all, okay. And so by the time we get to the Book of Numbers, Israelites are leaving Sinai and heading into the wilderness. It's not long before this passage I want to talk about comes up. And literally the title of it in my Bible is Complaints About Hardship. Not long before they enter the wilderness, there is a title that is entitled Complaints About Hardship. And like two sentences later, it's like Complaints About Food. Isn't it funny how complaint is such a big trap when you're in a wilderness season? It's such a big trap. And how often in life does this happen to us? Where very soon after entering what we see as a wilderness season, complaint becomes the title on our lips. I think it's easy to look at the Israelites like, why are y'all complaining? Why are y'all complaining when the Lord is with you? Da -da -da -da. We get the whole Bible to read and we know how everything's gonna go. They are actually living in it. They don't know what tomorrow looks like. All they know is that miracles happen back there. And also right now, we have no food. This is hard. What's the point of this? Is this any different than where I was before? Because it feels, it feels hard. This is hard, where I was was hard. And in verse four, they are romanticizing where they were before. Fact is, they were in slavery, they were in bondage, they were treated terribly. But when they recollect where they used to be, suddenly it's this place where they had fish every day. They were like, where are the leeks? Where are the onions? Where is the garlic? Okay, that's literally what they said in, was it verse four? I think it's verse four. We had leeks, onion, and garlic. And now all we have to look at is this manna. When I was looking up commentary, I was looking up commentary about leeks, onions, garlic, right? Because technically I'm like, give y'all the benefit of the doubt. Like we've all been there where we're in a wilderness season. We don't know what's next. I'm like leeks, onion, garlic, and fish. That does sound like a heartier meal to us now. But when I looked at commentary, all the things that they were talking about that they craved, the leeks, the onions, the garlic, all of that was the typical diet of the lowest class at that time. So they literally craved things, the elements of bondage, the elements of lower class things. Again, another reflection question, how often are we craving things simply because it's comfort food and it's familiar? We tend to romanticize comfortable, familiar things over manna from heaven. Like they had manna from actual heaven. Every day, fresh supply from actual heaven. That's crazy. And you crave the things that, that you ate when you were in bondage? You crave the things that you consumed in bondage. Remember the things you consumed in bondage? Remind yourself what that meant. I hope that makes sense. The things you consume matter. They consume those things in bondage and they wanted that back. They wanted that back. It's like when you it's like when you break up with somebody and you still have their sweatshirt and you just crave their sweatshirt because it makes you feel close to them. That's what I feel like is happening to these Israelites right now. Like they, they are craving their ex. Period. Period. Oh my gosh, it's 901. I have to hurry. It's manna from heaven. And they even describe what it tastes like. It's not no just like regular thing. It said after they crushed it and formed it into cakes, it tasted like a pastry made from the finest oil. What does it say? A sweet pastry? It, it said it tastes like a pastry cooked with the finest oil. It's giving fine dining. They were given mwah, chef's kiss literally from heaven. And they were like, all we have to look at is this manna. You mean the manna that comes from heaven that is a pastry that tastes like the finest oil and you're eating it as a free person with the Lord? What? Interesting how the things that they thought tasted good, wasn't good, the manna that they felt was mundane and repetitive is actually such freedom in it. And how often, how often, how often do we look at the mundane and take it for granted and complain about the mundane? We can't complain about mundane things because everything is designed. Everything is designed from heaven. Like the things you take for granted, that is designed and a gift from heaven. Like, ah, 
just makes you want to be thankful you know what i mean i think of it like i don't want in my book of life to to get to the chapter where i head in my wilderness season which i do feel like i'm in right now low-key a little bit in my wilderness season i don't want to get there and then y'all see the title pia complains about hardship foundation on top of the concealer i'm putting the foundation on top of everything on top of all the things need some chapstick lord there we go more foundation imagine imagine how much different it would have been if the israelites praised god for the manna what if what if that title in the bible was israelites will enter the hello the israelites enter the wilderness and then the next title the israelites praise god for manna and they just romanticize the manna honestly sing a praise you know what i mean like thank you lord for this manna it tastes like really good pastry thank you lord for this manna i, I don't know what rhymes with pastry but you know what i'm saying let's make a little beat out of it let's let's just spend time praising and romanticizing the things the lord has done because they're worth romanticizing like how cool how cool provision every day the daily bread every single day is worth romanticizing your daily bread is worth romanticizing that's beautiful that spoke to me wow before a complaint comes out that feeling i believe is just part of being human honestly like we all have that feeling where it's rooted from discomfort and oftentimes rooted from inconvenience of some sort what if we just took that root though before we created the fruit of complaint out of our mouths what if we rewind and go back to the root Take that root, pluck it, and turn it into a prayer. And be like, Lord, this is inconvenient. This is uncomfortable. It doesn't make me feel good. Like, lift it up. Pray for a perspective change. Imagine if the Israelites prayed for a perspective change. Ah! ah! You would, I just feel like you would cut out so much extra suffering if you would turn your complaints into prayer. Imagine how much more damage complaint does to you. Like it feels good in the moment and then nothing's actually solved. Okay, so battery ran out of juice. So we're gonna do this in a little chunk. Now all I did was just blend out what I already had and then I just added some refined glow. But praise God for your manna. Think about the manna in your life. Think about how you can be more thankful for it today. And turn those complaints into prayers, honey, because that's where the difference is really made. Like it's like saying, let me talk to the manager. So next time you want to complain, just say, you know what? I'm going to take it up with the manager. I'm going to take it up with the manager. And we're going to we're gonna see what happens from there. He might change the heart of what you're complaining about. He might even change your heart to change your perspective about what you're complaining about. So we praise God for manna. We praise God for manna because it's from heaven. And it's beautiful. It's intentional. And it keeps us full. Oh, oh. And the finished look. My little work look. Clean, simple, nice, fresh, dewy skin. We love it. And yeah, I gotta go to work now. I recorded a whole YouTube video. Ah, period.